Pastor Luke, good afternoon. Pastor Troy, hello. This is our uh, second video of the afternoon, but it's our fourth time today being in here doing this. Yep. And because we're up to 73 subscribers. We are hitting it big. On YouTube, <laughs> 73, baby. Yep. Uh, and how many countless millions that watch on Facebook. It's been a few days mm -hmm. since we've had a pastor chat, yep. also known as Rev It Up, also known as Patmos Live. Patmos, this is not live. Oh yeah. Not live. Patmos podcast. Okay. Anyway, yeah. um, we, it's been since Saturday, we were going to go home, but why when we could just sit in the dwelling place by ourselves would we leave yet? Yeah. Um, what we have been working on this afternoon that I thought was worth sharing, is, and you can see up here on the thing, and we even have tried to keep some of the glare down. Sorry, we learned that at Bible study this morning. But uh, we're, doing, we're going to do some videos on the sacrament of the altar, otherwise known as communion, the Holy Eucharist, breaking of the bread, Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper, yeah. The sacrament of the altar, did I say that already? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, as we were talking through that, we said, well, one of the things that we are called to do as pastors is, is to teach and the importance of teaching mm -hmm. uh, and teaching. And, and the word that came up was doctrine, which has to do with teaching. Doctrine and you said, teaching, yeah. yeah, and then you said doctrine is life. Yes. Yeah. I'm distracted, and so I can take this off of here. Thank you to Julaine Bolden. Oh, yes. For my... This is a completely a distraction, but Julaine, thank you. I got to get this up over my nose. Boiler so, up. So now we're safe. Yeah, you have a... I'm not going to keep this on the whole time, but now I can take it off the yeah. table. You have an American flag one. Yeah. Thank you for your service. Oh, you're welcome. Sergeant Watt. Now retired Sergeant Watt. Yes. So... Um, are you retired, honorably discharged? You're not retired. Honorably or, discharged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay, I'll focus now. Doctrine. Doctrine. <clears throat> doctrine means teaching. You said doctrine. Doctrine is life. And then I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what you, what you meant by that, but I think I understand. Tell me more. Well, I think it's easy to think of doctrine as kind of these dusty, dry ideas. Oh, that dry doctrine. Nobody wants to hear about dry doctrine. Yeah. But I, I get excited about doctrine. This is what I studied the most at when I was at the seminary, uh, because I really do believe that doctrine is not just some dry concepts that are very abstract. Doctrine really is, well, doctrine in the church, it shapes our practice, what we do as the church, yeah. but it also shapes our entire life. Right, so, so doctrine is, is teaching. Yes. And then the great teacher, you know, he's not only a teacher, is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he is, yeah, I'm just I'm fired up. <laughs> Jesus, so, and then Jesus is actually the subject and the object of the gospel. Yes. Meaning it's about him, but he also does it. And then you said, well, all theology is practical, and really all doctrine should be practical. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, though, by practical? Like, that should be easy? Uh, if only it were easy. Okay. Uh, no, doctrine is, is practical because it... It has meaning for our everyday life. It has bearing on our life. It actually shapes how we live, how we ought to live as Christians. Right. So, and you, you had talked about then the connection between doctrine and practice. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, there's a baptismal font over there. One of the things that we do in the Lutheran church, although not only Lutherans do this, is we baptize infants, mm -hmm. babies. Mm -hmm. So that's something we do. It's a practice. But that actually is a reflection or born out of a doctrine. What doctrine is behind us baptizing infants? Doctrine of justification. Okay. And also that we baptize infants because they can't do anything for themselves. Mm -hmm. Like a clear picture of the way that you're brought into God's family is not by finding your way or earning your way or figuring it out. It's that God does it. It's all gift. Yeah. It's all gifts, and in, in, gift, and infants can't do anything for themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean we only baptize infants. We baptize people of any age. But, um, and also saying you can't do it yourself because we have a doctrine that is a, now it's a scriptural truth, right? Mm -hmm. That we say we're born sinful and unclean, 
And so, because we say that, you, like we could never, we're not neutral and could never choose God. No, left to our own devices, we actually choose not to God. Right. We choose to be God. Right. We, we reject, we are enemies to God, of God. So we have these doctrines or teachings that are all about Jesus, the rabbi, the teacher, also the savior. They all have a practical outlet. So then we talked about, because, we're, because all this again is born out of us saying, we're gonna teach on the sacrament of the altar because we have concluding confirmands whenever confirmation, the rite of confirmation is gonna be, but we can teach everybody. And here, because we've been doing these videos, we thought, well, it's more opportunity to teach. Yeah. Um, well, especially also in light of our decision to not have communion until we oh, can come Oh, yeah, that's together. what we, we had that, the, the other videos from Saturday, the other video from Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why are we doing the things that we're doing, a practice? Mm -hmm. Well, the behind that is a doctrine or a teaching, mm -hmm. not just something that we make up. We say, well, grounded in the scriptures, and all of it in the end is about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So then we, we said, so while doctrine and then the other term I keep throwing around here is practice, We said, though, but there are some, so the things that we do will reflect our doctrine. However, there are some practices that could actually be against what we teach, and so that's why we, we have questions about those. Yeah, and that's something that we're talking through. We've been talking through, and we're, we're inviting you into this, especially with our decisions regarding communion. Right. Uh, would a possible solution be the best practice that actually reflects what we believe in our doctrine. Right. Yeah, and so all of this, so, so some church bodies say, I, didn't, I know I, we, we talked a little bit before this, some church bodies say, well, doctrine divides. Yeah. And love unites. Yeah. So, and, and it's like, well, look, we, we don't need, we don't need that, that's too much of like head over heart, whatever. We're saying, well, really it's both, but because the doctrine is ultimately about Jesus and centered in Jesus, it's, it's important. It's, it's a lifelong thing. Oh, what is the word then, as we're talking and through, like, teaching people, what is that fancy word we use for teaching people that's a lifelong thing? Catechesis. Catechesis. And so here we are. You have a small catechism right there. That's a little... Uh, and catechesis or teaching is something that's lifelong. Yeah. And so it's not just, oh, when you're in seventh and eighth grade, you'll learn everything you need to know. The entire life. The entire Christian life is a life of catechesis. Because we never stop following Jesus. I, I hope I understand better today what it means to follow Jesus than when I was, I'm 42 now, than say when I was 24 uh, or when I was 14. But Lord willing, I'll continue probably through suffering mm -hmm. to, to wrestle through that and figure out what that, Jesus doesn't change, mm -hmm. but the world around us is changing. I'm changing. Mm -hmm. And I think you, we, we experience this when you know, you read a familiar Bible passage or you hear a familiar Bible passage in church or it's preached on and you've maybe heard it dozens of times, but there's still something new that strikes you. Uh, yeah. There's something, a new facet to it that uh, has been brought out to, to you. And, right. Uh, that reflects the Christian life is a lifelong process of catechesis. Yeah. And so I think for me in my 12th season now of being a pastor and you here in your first season, my point seven five. Yeah, you're three quarters of the way there <laughs> through. Uh, but I think that's part of the challenge and the opportunity is to say, like, this, this never stops. And what I've appreciated about this that, that I think we're finding, I don't know what the sweet spot is, but finding something where now we're able to use technology, not exclusively, but, but largely to now bring people into these conversations about well, look, here's what we do. We baptize infants. Well, here's what we do. We have the Lord's Supper, and we say this is the very body and blood of Christ in, with, and under the bread and the wine. Mm -hmm. In, with, and under the bread. This is the very blood <laughs> of Christ in, with, and under the wine. That, that's the what, but behind that is a, a how and a why. Mm -hmm. And that's a, there's a constant kind of ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to, and I've appreciated kind of having people along with us. So as we've thought about this, um, here, here's another example we had talked about. So within our church body, the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, and you'll see this, while we have a congregational polity, we have voters meetings, we talked earlier, there are some things we actually don't vote on. Yeah. 
like doctrine. Like doctrine. We don't vote, you know, um, whether or not baptism is baptism. We don't vote on whether or not Jesus is Lord or true God or true man. Mm -hmm. it just is. Yeah. Yeah. And you said our doctrine, had, doctrine hasn't changed. You initially said for 2,000 years. Well, yes, as Lutheran Christians, we do believe that our, our teaching, while we're only, the Lutheran Church is only 500 years old, uh, it does reflect the church Catholic, lowercase right. c. Lowercase c. Um, but our, our doctrine really has not changed. Right. Uh, how we maybe apply it to specific situations might look differently. How we uh, talk about it um, might change, but the doctrine itself does not change. Right. So, because it's about Jesus, yes. and he is the unchanging one, he does not so change. how do we follow the unchanging Christ mm -hmm. through a world that is constantly changing? Mm -hmm. And we're constantly changing. Yeah. And on the other side, there are many church bodies that, I mean, they have changed their doctrine so much, especially in the last decade. Um, right. It's like doctrine doesn't even mean anything because they've, they've changed it, they've dismissed it, they've created new doctrines. Yes. Um, it's completely watered down. Which is back to this thing of if something's constantly changing, it can't be true. Yeah. And so when Jesus and the doctrine, the rabbi, he is the teacher, but it's also about him. Mm -hmm. When he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he doesn't change. There's comfort in that. We don't always like it, though. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus, but, you know, the... The world would like me better yeah. if I just go along with it. Yeah. But Jesus doesn't call us to be liked by the world. He calls us to discipleship, yeah. to obedience, yeah. uh, to follow him. And that's not always popular. Right. Uh, maybe even spe especially today. Not, not, not popular, popular, not easy. Not easy. It's excruciating at times. As we said before, cross-shaped. Mm-hmm. Um, so to, this is uh, the Wednesday of Holy Week. Yes. I think we're ready to go home for tonight. This yeah. will be a shorter video than we have had. But uh, just as, as we were talking through this, stay tuned. I don't know that they'll be in this pastor chat for, I don't know, they'll be online as we we're planning to talk about, first of all, what a sacrament is. And then we're going to go through Luther's small catechism, which is divided into it doesn't say exactly, well, it kind of says what, why, how, and then we've got two hows on here. Yeah. How do it work? <laughs> oh, that's how the internet talks. Yeah. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to get into that more. I look mm -hmm. forward to that. We're going to actually take a field trip, I think, to the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Any other updates here on our not live chat? Uh, worship tomorrow, Monday, Thursday at 4.30, uh, Good Friday at 4.30. Yes. It's pronounced Maundy, I learned. Maundy, Thursday. Yes. Maundy. Yes. So, uh, if, yeah. And also, same times for worship on Sunday, Easter, 8.30 and 10.45. Yes. Okay. That's all I got. That's all I got. I'm ready to go home. Yeah, yeah. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful evening in Jesus, the one who doesn't change, who calls us to follow him. Look forward to seeing you soon. Right. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes.